my personal experience as a senior product designer that I've taken over the last 10 years. Three years was extremely hard. There was a lot of downs, then up. So in this video, I'm going to share 10 life experience that I've gone through over the last 10 plus years as a senior product designer. And matter of fact, it's 13 years of experience, but I really don't want to count the first three years because it was just me dropping out of college, getting clients. Majority of the time, my design has been taken for granted. A lot of the clients literally took my projects, the website that I've designed for them, the logos that I've designed for them for free, and I really couldn't afford a lawyer. I'm like, okay, you know what, whatever, it was, a, it was just an experience. And um, another 40% of it, I'll probably say that the amount of price that we ne negotiated, it, they gave me, you know, 50% lower because, you know, I was a kid and I I just wanted experience, but that's okay. It was an amazing experience and my God, I maybe have designed thousands and thousands of websites by now, but overall it was a wonderful experience. Why don't I share it to you? And these 10 life lessons are not by the books or from school. It's just my personal experience that I would love to share with you guys in this video. And I hope it can relate with you guys and realize that maybe whatever you guys are going through, I have gone through it as well. So number one, I would like to rip the band-aid off. Extremely competitive industry right now. Back in the days, there weren't really much UX UI designers. And nowadays it's extremely hardcore because a lot of people wants to become a UX UI designer. UX researcher, UI designer, product designer. So it's extremely competitive and the job descriptions are ridiculous. It always has been <laughs> ridiculous. I remember the days when Steve Jobs has launched the iPhone and there were only minimal apps. Like biggest brands would only have an app. For example, Facebook or Microsoft email system. So those were just the basic apps and Apple, not in Apple, sorry, in iPhone. Funny part was companies started posting jobs looking for application designer or mobile designer. The hilarious part was they were looking for a mobile designer with five years of experience, which didn't make sense at all because iPhone was just released in that year. So how can someone have five years of experience already designing apps? Doesn't make any sense. So you are still going to uh, face those type of job descriptions in this industry and just laugh it out. That's pretty much what it is. Now going back to being competitive, it is very hard nowadays to get a job interview, but that shouldn't really defeat you from becoming a product designer, which takes me to number two. You should really love what you're doing because this field is something that you should do it with passion. For example, Netflix, if they come out with a new feature, it should really excite you and you should be the type of person who will later on, maybe a couple of days later or even the next day, Google the new feature and read the case study about it and hopefully you can bring that to the table of the company you would like to work for or even on your new project because that is something that I do on my free time. Matter of fact, when I was 10 years old, I designed my first website and that's where I did the you know product design, well, it was called web design at that time. Uh, what do you call it? I did coding, programming and everything mainly because I extremely love it. I also love the fact that how the industry that we're in, it can transform into different titles such as conversational designer. And that's where you learn how to work with Google Voice to deliver the content that your users are looking for. And even like smartwatches, you can have these mini apps and have minimal content for your um, customers as well. But let's not you know, talk much about it because I'll just keep going. But all I'm saying is it's a very competitive environment and you do have to do whatever it takes to stand out. Therefore, you should really, really love this industry. Number three, this one is my favorite. School versus real life experience. The ugly truth is the amount of information that you learn in school, you there's a strong 50% chance I would say that you're not going to apply them at work. Not a lot of companies have the bandwidth or the budget for product designer to spend a month or even to focus on the discovery stage or do a lot of user surveys or create user personas before diving into a problem. I would love that process but it just never really happened to me. And I have worked with many brands, some of them are worldwide known to all the way to a startup company and they just don't have the luxury to do it. So you have to really minimize your discovery stage and quickly jump into competitive analysis and etc. Yeah, school experience, real life experience, completely. What? This one is hilarious. Number four, Mac versus PC. Wait a second, if I buy a Mac, my 
design will definitely enhance by a thousand percent. But wait a second, why should I stick to PC? That is so old. I don't wanna do a PC. Everybody here has a Mac. Wait a second, you know what? I should show people how luxury I am. Let me just get a Mac. Okay, stop that, all right? Just stop that. It doesn't work that way. For 13 plus years, I've been using a PC and I love it. Every time when someone tells me to use a Mac, I always tell, I give them a straight question. How is my design experience going to enhance if I use a PC? And nobody really gave me a solid answer to it because the ugly truth is, it doesn't really matter what platform you use. You can use a Mac, you can use a PC. Just don't use a smartwatch. <laughs> I'm just joking, that's a, that's a bad joke. Nowadays, you can start designing with a Samsung tablet and even, uh, what do you call it? The new iPad. You can even use those with the pen. I'm sure Figma Sketch XD, all those platforms are available there. You can go ahead and you know start designing there. Yeah, wow, wow, the world has changed a lot. Technology has changed a lot. Just by even saying that sentence, quite amazing. Yes, so long story short, it doesn't really matter what platform you use, as long as you're dedicated into designing, yeah. <laughs> Number five, take a deep breath. <sighs> Excel, your first job, it's okay. It's okay if you don't know something when you're working for a company, it's 100% fine. There's no spotlight at you saying, oh my God, this new junior designer doesn't know how to use Google Analytics or know how to use Adobe XD and he's just a sketch designer. What? He doesn't know how to do wireframes? You know what? Let's fire him and hire someone else. All these thoughts that you have going in your head, trust me, it's not true. If the creative director or senior product designer Let's just say your boss has given you a project and you have a and you have to use a certain new tool. It's okay to go to your boss and be like, hey, I kinda don't know this tool. I have heard about it. Can I just spend this day to learn about it? And then I can deliver uh, what you're looking for. That way, you know, I don't just deliver something which is like a five out of 10. I would love to do my best and do a 10 out of 10. So it's okay to be honest, you know, at the end of the day, your boss has interviewed you, has looked at your resume. You guys talked about you know design and what tools you have used. So he or she already knows if you will if you know this tool or not. As long as you are someone who is willing to learn, as long as you are someone who's looking to experiment, then you really shouldn't have a problem. This industry that we are in, there's always like some sort of new features or new software that we have to apply into our projects, and that's the best part of our industry because it's not boring, right? Imagine being an accountant, doing the same thing over and over again. No disrespect to the accountant, but you get what I'm saying. So, you know, just be eager to learn new things and you will do great, my friend, you will do great. Number six, it's okay to suck. This is also very relevant to point number five. As long as you admit that, hey, you know what? I'm a great researcher, but I'm not really the best in terms of designing the UI element, then that's totally fine. As long as you're open to learn it and you're able to understand what is your high skill set and your low skill set. As long as you're, you're able to adapt to that in a very early stage, I guarantee you, you'll be a great product designer. Throughout the years of my life, working with companies where there are a team of designers, I have met designers who are very good at analyzing in terms of user perspective, but they're not so great when they are designing because they can't think in terms of what the user would want. I have met other designers, they're great in terms of brainstorming, the discovery stage, they're great at uh, figuring things out, what will work, what not work, what might be a bug, what not, what might not be a bug, what user will really, really want, things like that. But, but when it comes to working in the sitemap stage, they're not really the best. And some designers are great with sitemap or site flow, uh, creating user personas, they really love that. A lot of designers I've met throughout the years, they're very weak in terms of UI and that's, I feel like that was more of my golden ticket because I was a graphic designer originally. But anyways, having said that, it's really okay to suck. When I started, I think, working for a company 10 years ago, my discovery stage was very weak. Really didn't understand much of the user experience because I came from a small graphic design brand, uh, background where it was print design, branding, uh, designing business cards, five page websites, and things like that. So I accepted it in a very early stage. Uh, which really helped me throughout my career. So it is okay to suck, but 
be confident. <laughs> Number seven, always over deliver. I feel like this is a, one of the very most important skill set to have, especially in this in industry because it's very competitive. Throughout my years, I have always been over delivering. If I'm either working for a company or I'm working with a client, I will always uh, provide more versions of the project. So if I'm designing, say, a homepage, I will have three designs ready for my boss to review. And these three designs would not look the same at all. They will look completely different. And then within those three designs, I will even have two extra versions of that where some of the elements uh, would be different. I feel like if you do that, you will have a job security. You will be able to get new clients. Something like this you can, you can even mention in your interview because companies love that. It doesn't matter how much money you make or how successful you are. Every successful businessman or designer whatever it may be, they always over deliver to their customer. Try walking into one of the luxury brands. Like when I walked into uh, BMW, before that I went to other dealerships like Nissan, Honda, Kia Motors. BMW over delivered to me to buy their car. You know, I felt really connected with this experience and therefore I, I bought a BMW instead of a Honda. Honda, uh, what do you call it? Honda sales guys, they just treat you like, okay, do you want the car? Yeah, okay, blah, blah, blah. But BMW, yo, do you want a coffee? Do you want snacks? Over delivering, that's what I'm trying to say. Over delivering is a high skill set to have and never stop doing that. Number eight, network. Network, network, network. I never really understood what, how networking really works. I mean, you know, there are networking events where you go in, which don't even bother because everybody's pitching the same shit. Sorry for saying that word, but you know, the same thing. So you're like, number 5,000 literally, cause they all see you as the same person who's looking to offer their design services. So it's a complete waste of time and also money. And uh, number two is LinkedIn is great. LinkedIn is really good. You know, you can send me a LinkedIn request. I've I accepted it. What happens from there? Are you going to message me? No, like majority of the LinkedIn requests I've gotten, aside from recruiting agencies, a client that's looking for a project, you know, things like that, I would get DM right away in LinkedIn. But when it comes to connecting with, say, a head of product designer from BMW Canada, and I send them a LinkedIn request, there's gonna be no conversation really going on. It's just that you accepted me and that's it. Hopefully you see a couple of my LinkedIn posts. So I'm not saying it's useless. It's good to have in LinkedIn, but the best networks are the people that you work with, the people that you meet in person, who you have a conversation with, and they are the best networks because three years later, you know what? The company that is working for is looking for an intermediate designer and right away, that, that person thought about you. I think that's the best form of network instead of just sending random LinkedIn connections. And this format has always worked for me. Obviously I have worked with a lot of clients over like many years and I've switched around with a, a lot of companies as well from corporations to um, small to large corporations. And the best network that I found was, you know, keeping a great connections with the people that I have worked with, whether it's in the product design team or the executive sales team, you know, management team, I've always kept well um, re relationship with them because I know maybe five years from now, they might contact me for a, a great role, which is a lot of money. But yeah, networking is great in that sense. So go ahead and try it out. Also, feel free to network with other designers as well, man. Why not? I know they are your competitors, but you never know. It's best to work with them in a project together because maybe somewhere down the, down the line, they might even need a freelancer to do some sort of a website or maybe an app and that could be you, my friend. Number eight, having a strong stomach. This is very important and I was so sensitive back in the days. Like I think it was like seven years ago or eight years ago. I was so, so sensitive. If I would get any negative feedback from my design, which I spent so many hours designing, so many revisions. When you save your work, uh, what do you call it? Uh, design hyphen one and then design hyphen one, hyphen one and then final design. Hopefully this is a final design. Yo man, this was, this was insane for me. I hated getting feedback back in the days. It would be, I would be so sensitive about it and my ego would kick in. I would eventually hate working on this project, a project that I loved all the way to like, my God, now I hate it. Now I have to do version 5,000. So to like, you know, get this approved. You know what, now I don't care anymore. This person doesn't even see what I see. He's not even a designer. Why is he telling me what to do? 
all these emotions came up to me you know a long time ago and it's very important to have that strong stomach because when you get a feedback appreciate it learn from it realize it apply it to the design if you feel like your design is better than the feedback you got then design the one where you got the feedback from and do another design that you believe is better and compare it together so that has been the best solution for me and and also in terms of feedback the most important tool is to communicate so communicate with your team whoever is giving you feedback um, ask them questions as well then why do you think this is not right or what do you think why don't you like this call to action or why do you think this content is blah blah, blah. so best to communicate and look at it in a very very peaceful way and last but not least enjoy this beautiful journey for me i enjoyed every bit of it in the last 10 years working with designers who even became my friends and i one of them even became my godmother to be honest and it's just been a great journey for me you know a lot of new tools came along the way like envision hello envision saved the whole prototype system back in the days I would have to email my boss or my team like these PNGs or JPEG of the websites that I've designed and that was so annoying or I would have to print them out, put it on a table and be like, yeah, so this is the home page. So when you click here, right, it would go over here. That was so annoying. It was just so hard for, you know, clients and just people in general to envision how your process works and I feel like Envision has saved that so thank you Envision if you're ever watching this which I don't know if you are but anyways what I'm trying to say if anything when you look at Steve Jobs or Elon Musk they all enjoyed their journey building their company and the same way you should really enjoy the process and I feel like if you don't enjoy the process and you reach the end game Thanos <laughs> no <laughs> you reach every time when someone says end game I, I think about Thanos I don't know why but yeah so when you reach to that end stage right you might not appreciate it so therefore enjoying this whole process of reaching to that level that you want to get to and I hope that level never happens because it never happened for me because I feel like there's always more to learn but anyways uh, when you get to that stage I hope you enjoy it because you've enjoyed that process it's fun it's a great learning experience it's always something new to learn like i said and that was it so that was my 10 life lessons my personal life lessons as a senior product designer with 10 years of experience uh, if you have any questions that you're currently facing as a junior designer please comment below and i will get back to you i'm also highly active on twitter and instagram my social media links are below and please like this video if you have not because it will really help my youtube algorithm and help it get discovered more on youtube and all that youtube game i guess you can call that uh so that's from that thank you so much for watching today's video until then i'll see you guys in my next video and my name is fahim md a senior product designer with 10 years of experience. I'll see you guys.